Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Billy Goat channel. My name is Billy, and in today's video, I just wanted to make kind of a chill sketchbook session. I'm going to have some footage of a sketchbook drawing going in the background, and I'm just going to talk about basically what's been going on with me over the last month or two and what's been going on with my art and stuff like that. Just a, just a bunch of random stuff. This is going to be the second video in my vlog series. Technically, it's supposed to be for the month of June, but like always, it got pushed back a little bit. And basically, this is why I have these numbered instead of like on a monthly basis, because I know that there's no way I'm going to be able to keep up with that kind of schedule. But to start off, I do want to remind everybody that I launched my Etsy shop and you can find a pretty good selection of my art on there. I've got two large original pieces. I've got four what I'm calling mini originals. These are just kind of smaller canvas panels that I've done. And then I've got a selection of 10 prints that you can choose from. So if you want to check my shop out, you can go to bmaceart.etsy.com and you can see what I have to offer there. Uh, anyway, on to other news. So I recently took this job at a company called Owens Corning. They make fiberglass insulation and I'm a machine operator there and I'm working night shift. But the way the schedule works there is that you work a month on night shift and then you work a month on day shift and you just alternate like that. They're 12 hour days. So basically I've been going in at like 7 p.m. and then I'll work all night until seven in the morning. What I like about the schedule is that you're only working 15 days out of the month. So even though they're like long days, you know, 12 hours, I'm getting a lot more time off and basically what I'm doing is I'm just watching these machines where the fiberglass, um, basically the fiberglass is produced on the other end of the factory in a 2,500 degree furnace. The molten glass gets dropped into these spinners where it's basically turned into like cotton candy fluff, um, spun around at high speeds. And then it goes through some chemical treatment and it goes into different compression stages and then it comes to where I am, uh, what they call the downline area, and that's where the machines push the finished fiberglass out of the, out of the machine into a bag and then the bag goes along and it gets sealed and, and put onto a stack by a mechanical robot arm thing. So uh, that's my new job and I'm actually enjoying it. It is very hot. Like as soon as I walk in there, the minute I start exerting myself, I'm like drenched in sweat. I mean, that's something I've had to get used to a little bit. And actually being diabetic, I noticed after like three days that my blood sugar was high and whenever I would try to give myself insulin, it was taking like multiple doses of insulin to actually bring my blood sugar down. Insulin has to be refrigerated because when it's exposed to heat, it can start to degrade over time. And I think that being in the hot warehouse for like three days in a row, it just really started to degrade my insulin and make it to where it isn't, it wasn't effective anymore. So I went on Amazon and I ordered this little cooling pouch called a Frio. Um, and so I can just put my pump into this pouch that like you soak it in cold water and then it expands. And it's supposed to keep your insulin cold for like 45 hours. Um, it says it works in temperatures of up to 100 degrees, like constant temperatures. So it should be more than enough, but I just gotta remember you know, that's going to have to be part of my routine now of like soaking this thing and, you know, putting my pump in it and all this stuff. Yeah, I'd say this job, you know, it's got some physical challenges to it, um, but the pay is much better than what I've had in the past. And I, I really do like the schedule, even though I'm working nights, you know, but going into it, I was kind of excited thinking like, oh, I'm going to be able to get so much done during the night. And that's true, 
but I also can't really make noise and the way my house is set up, if I try to do a voiceover like this, I'm gonna be waking some people up. So that's why I had to sneak out of the house in the middle of the night and come out here to Wawa and, and try to do this in the parking lot. So what you've been watching in the background is a little bit of a sketchbook piece that I did recently. In this picture here, I'm using a Japanese watercolor set along with um, some water brushes that I'm a big fan of. These are Pentel water brushes. This painting here, I really like how this one turned out. I named this one Watermelon Tesseract because uh, there was a little section of it near the middle that kind of ended up looking like a slice of watermelon to me. So it seems like the last couple of months I've really been having trouble when I sit down to draw something with coming up with like a concrete concept or a character or a, or a location or even drawing things from reference, uh, which was kind of a goal of mine going into my third sketchbook here. I was like, oh, I'm really gonna start, you know, practicing anatomy, practicing perspective and stuff. And somehow I've just been completely unable to do that. In fact, I'm really like doing the opposite and really leaning into the more uh, abstract side of things. And I've been trying to figure out what's going on. Like, you know, when I started drawing in my sketchbook, I kind of thought I'd be doing a lot of science fiction, like kind of characters and, and scenes and stuff like that some of the the pieces I I did that I have on sale one of them's called the lone survivor I have another one called is that the guy and those two are kind of like examples of what I thought my art was going to look like I just never imagined that I'd be really getting into an abstract era um it's not that I don't like abstract art the thing is, whenever I do art like that, that doesn't have a subject or something concrete and relatable to look at, even if I feel like it's a success to myself, it also feels kind of like I've just wasted time in terms of growing as an artist. So I'm at this weird kind of point in my art journey right now. On one hand, I kind of I've always believed that whatever art I happen to be creating in the moment is the right thing I should be doing. You know, I don't like forcing myself to do any certain type of art. And I like the idea that my art could be something that really evolves and is ever changing as I kind of, you know, pick different paths and directions to go down. Uh, right now, I've just really been diving deep into different materials, different techniques like every time I paint or go into my sketchbook I'm I'm coming at it from an angle like ooh what if I do this you know it's like very experimentation based and I'm just really enjoying the versatility of of paints and kind of the unpredictability of it as well of you know what's going to happen when I put these two colors together and and this particular ratio or this consistency and what if I use these tools but that's just really been the zone I'm in lately. And I, I do kind of want to get over the fear of just trying to paint something more realistic. Because ultimately, that's the only way to figure out where I am uh, and to figure out what I need to work on. And most likely, it won't turn out as bad as I think it will. But I also want to get over my fear of using references because for one thing, every time I use a reference, it usually turns out great, but it's just that when I use them, it kind of feels unoriginal and it feels like I'm just being like a, a copy machine, you know, basically. But yeah, as far as my sales have gone for my Etsy shop, I've made one online sale and I've also made three in-person sales. And my biggest seller so far has been my drawing called Elephant, which is just a pencil drawing of an elephant. That's kind of interesting to me that while I'm on this kind of abstract kick right now, my best-selling piece of art is one of the most realistic drawings that I've done in my sketchbook. 
and it was done from reference. So I'm just sitting here thinking like, damn, do I need to start drawing like photorealistic animals now? Like, again, that's not what I'm going to do, but I don't know. I don't, I don't know what to make of that. I think my long-term goal is figuring out how I can synthesize things I'm experimenting with with paints, how do I bring that and merge that with kind of the the personality that I get when I'm doing kind of line art and my more detailed drawings that I've done in previous sketchbooks. Uh, and sorry if this voiceover has been kind of rambling, but like I said, I'm sitting in my truck I don't really have, I tried to write a script and even the script was like going off the rails. So I was like, you know what? I'm just going to try to, you know, wing it. So I know I'm calling these videos vlogs. You know, this is the second one I've done so far. And once again, I'm like, man, is this even a vlog? Like, I'm not going to be talking to the camera. I'm not going anywhere. You know, there's no cool events or like hanging out with people or anything like that. I'm actually really bad about filming when I go out places. Like, if you're an art YouTuber, you gotta have that camera ready to, like, take some B-roll footage or, or something when you go out. And actually, I went to the beach two different times in June, which is, like, a crazy amount for me. And both times, I, like, totally forgot to take out my camera and, and take any pictures or, or video or anything. Um, so this is just going to be kind of a simple vlog, but I did want to give some recommendations. Right now, I've been reading A People's History of the United States, which is a pretty famous book, you know, as far as kind of accounts of labor movements and looking at American society from the viewpoint of kind of the lower classes and the working class. I wanted to bring this book up and, and kind of recommend it because I'm almost done with it. I've been almost done for months and hopefully I can actually finish it and um, I want to start doing some book recommendations and kind of book discussions and trying to fit that into my vlog videos because reading used to be a huge part of my life and it's really just fallen off a cliff. like. Actually, I'll, I'll go ahead and show this little chart that I made because I keep a record of all the books that I've read. And yeah, as you can see from this chart, like it just fell off precipitously. And I've basically been reading like one or two books a year, if that, for a couple years now. It's really depressing. So yeah, I just wanted to bring this book up. I do recommend it. It's probably, probably a four out of five book for me kind of eye-opening but it but it does have that thing of you know history books where it's like you get 400 pages in and it's just like a barrage of dates you know January 6 1947 this happened and then September 19th 1948 this happened and this group did this and it's like okay like it's interesting but it's a lot of information uh, as far as some other things can't say I've had a lot of time for gaming, but I have been trying to fit a little time in, a little me time for some video games. And so I've been playing a little bit of Diablo 4 and I have been enjoying it, but it's one of those games that I think is really meant to be played with like a group of people. And I tried to play with my brother a couple weeks ago and my headset wasn't working, so I couldn't communicate with him. So Diablo 4 is kind of on hold for me until I can get a new headset, but I was enjoying that. I've, I've been playing as a rogue and trying to make a poison build. I don't know what the meta build is for like a rogue. So every time I put a point into this massive skill tree, I'm just like, oh my God, am I totally just making a busted, like horrible character, like a horrible build? I don't know, but yeah. Diablo 4 has been pretty cool. I've also been playing Far Cry 6, which my friend Carrie, uh, I know he's been playing that and he kind of uh, got me interested in it. I can't say that Far Cry 6 is like dramatically different from any of the previous games, but I gotta say, like I'm having a surprising amount of fun with it. There's something about Far Cry games 
where they always try to be like dramatic and have, you know, kind of these stories of rebel groups trying to overthrow the horrible dictator or whatever, whether it be Voss from Far Cry 3 or Pagan Men from the fourth one. But these are like undeniably goofy games. Like just the most ridiculous shit happens when you're playing a Far Cry game and you'd think it would kind of undermine everything and make it feel cheesy, but it really doesn't. It just like elevates everything. So yeah, I've really been enjoying Far Cry 6. That's like my main game at the moment. And finally, my last recommendation for this vlog is a soda called Fresca. I want to know who the hell was keeping Fresca a secret. Like, this is a soda that I've probably seen many times. I always see it right next to the Seagram's ginger ale and never gave it any thought until the other day. I wanted to just try something new, so I bought a Fresca. It's a grapefruit soda, and that shit was so refreshing, I was amazed. So yeah, if you haven't had a Fresca, go check it out. So the last thing I want to say before I wrap up this video is I will have another uh, drop for my Etsy shop coming up. Um, I want to kind of get it out before the fall, so hopefully either in August or early September. Also, that's when my local art market will be starting back up is in September. So hopefully I'll have some uh, announcements to make in that area as well. But yeah, just stay tuned. I just wanted to share what I've been up to and show you some of my uh, recent art to all my fellow artists out there. Just keep on trucking. Um, the most important thing is that you just keep developing your yourself and your interests trust your instincts as an artist and just follow your gut I think is all you can do I know you know personally I have a tendency to overanalyze every little decision I'm making every little choice and then constantly fighting with the feeling of of wasting time like I could be doing something better I could be doing something more relevant you know just try to get to the core of what makes you excited because I think ultimately, you know, your best work is going to come from that place where you're really psyched, really pumped, you're curious. So yeah, just keep on chugging along. That's what I would say. But once again, to everyone out there, I hope you're doing well and I'll see you in the next video. Later.